Welcome to One More Game presented by Hoosier Pickleball. I'm your host, Matt Brainerberger, alongside my stunning wife, Abby. Hey, that was... <laughs> you don't need to... Did you like that no, adjective? No, no. It felt like you were lying to yourself. Oh, no, no, not at all. <laughs> Um, we're also joined by our producer, Adam Marino. He doesn't lie if he says it about me. The right, number sure. one stunner. Because I do the finger guns on YouTube, <laughs> if you're watching. This is our, <laughs> this is our third episode. Are you going to yourself? <laughs> don't worry about me, okay? Sh- shoot I produce, over there. this is your podcast <laughs> and I produce it. You don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your finger guns to yourself. <laughs> uh, this is episode three of our podcast for those who love pickleball, but life be crazy so abs how's the crazy so i feel like this is this is like a whole i feel like this could be a whole show of your craziness the crazy is strong with this one mm. yes just this particular topic mm. of orga- <laughs> that's a good mm, good yoda it is mm. <laughs> excuse me go ahead okay you have the floor um, <laughs> of organizing pickleball play mm. yes. drives me bonkers explain so typically especially if you're moving indoors you have to have eight or nine or ten i don't even like ten i prefer eight or nine yep and so wait ten fingers people people people, humans humans that play because we're renting a court and you want to play the entire time and there's two court on a tennis court you know you're playing both sides of it so you've got Eight is perfect if everybody shows up and if everybody stays healthy the whole time. Eight's perfect. Healthy the whole time, yeah. <laughs> but That's oftentimes thing. we need to sub because right. somebody's like, and, I yeah. got to sit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so nine, nine's probably ideal. Yeah, but 10 is good too. Yep. Oh, so I feel like as somebody who has become kind of an organizer, I don't I don't love it. And it's so, it's just an annoying part of pickleball. It's great when you can play outside. You can just get three other people. Hey, let's go play. Let's go meet at jury. Right. And then we'll mix in even. But we'll, we at least got, you know, a couple friends there. But sure. anyways, I spent too many hours a trying to time. organize some play. The for, group text and like all that stuff. Yeah. Who saying? can play? Can you? No, I can, I can play at one. Well, can everybody else play at one? Well, no, I can't play at one, but I can play at five. Okay. Who can play at five? Well, me, I can play at eight. Like, <laughs> Holy cow. And so, sometimes there'll be a little side text, like you're in a group and then somebody will side text and say, like, let's get a group. Let's yeah, do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right. oh. like, then I'll get a side text, like, could we play here instead? Yeah. And I'm like, oh my. Yeah. So I spent way too much energy and way too much time on this. And I finally was like, never mind. All for naught. I canceled it. Yeah. I canceled the court. I was like, it's fine. But I, I, I will But say, I didn't get enough people because I couldn't right. get to eight. I got to seven. Yeah. Seven's the worst. Yeah. The worst. All of that to say, then the next day, which we were going to play, ended up working out perfectly because we ended up needing to go to eat. Yeah, we had a kind of a fa- family emergency, yeah. family friend um, that, you know, long story short, um, we ended up driving down to Indy. And so it would have, then Abby would have been the one to like call and cancel. And it would have all of this made it worse. So, yeah. yeah. So we'll call it a God thing that yeah. it, it didn't work out for a reason. Right. We were able to spend yeah. some time. So then after Indy, I drove straight with a couple extra kids uh, straight to to Costco to get tires Mm -hmm. on a Sunday, which pro tip, don't go to Costco on a Sunday. Oh, my gosh. It is Mm. madness. But our tires were basically bald, I had been told. And so the first available was Sunday afternoon at four. So I have all these kids there. We're there for two hours and I'm they're just running and I'm just, oh, my goodness. Did you get pizza? (laughs) We got mm, pizza. They have the best pizza. I know. We got pizza and I hot dogs. Yeah. So. yeah, they're and good the hot there. hot dog comes it, with a free pop. It worked yes, out. Yes, I, yeah, yeah. I know this. This yep. is good. We, yeah. we do food at Costco anytime we, we go do. there. Costco's yeah. a California thing. I grew up with Costco. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So when it I came mean, here, I was like, well, finally. Right. Yeah. And Sam's I have Club, my, take that. Yeah. Right. I have my list of Costco items. I will only get at Costco. Right. So I was ready. I had They're almonds, the best. Almonds, yes. They're Kirkland almonds. Kirkland, yep. Love it. Oh, yeah. Love it. Um, it was also my birthday. It was your birthday. Yeah, last week. I am now 44 years what? young. What? Even I didn't know that. Big 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. So, He's mid-40s now. Yeah. Dude, you don't look a day over over 42. <laughs> well, seriously. <laughs> couple yeah. days. Yeah. He's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> got some gray hair. I do have a few Yeah, I mean, you definitely look like in your 40s, bro. Like, yeah. I mean, that's sure. fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. I'm cool with that. It's, it's like, what's... You know, it's like George Clooney, Richard Gere. Right, these like, dudes. What's the word I'm looking these for? These dudes got it going. It's like on. a mature. So, yeah. What's the yeah. word? I don't know. Stunning. 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 I'll take it. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, I also did go to the Colts game. Um, we, I'm sorry. We live about two. God, yeah, their it offense. Was, it was so <laughs> Can we talk about something else? So yeah. oh I did God. see they are no longer have their offensive coordinator. It's yeah, that's, their starting that's a, quarterback. That's a different show. They normally. I actually they, like the the new guy, Sam Ellinger. Ellinger. I think he he could be legit, but. Yeah, they just it was a frustrating game, but still had a good day. I took one of my daughters. Yeah, um, it's fun to go to an NFL oh, game. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. And it was her first like I've taken her to a preseason. She's in 3rd grade and preseason is way different. So For sure. Yeah, the the atmosphere and it was it was actually a really good game. I right, mean, as far as football of, goes. Yeah, just yeah. did not turn out for the Colts. She did she did talk a lot about it. Yeah, she was on Monday. Yeah. And oh, so it's in exciting. fact, yeah, yeah, yeah she is now she wears her football jersey now. Around. Yeah, it's my so, buddy, it's cute. Yeah. my buddy just went to Detroit because the Warriors were in town recently mm. and took his kids first yeah. NBA game. And yeah. I mean that. I mean there is an atmosphere. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just something it's that fun. a memory that they'll have forever. Lives. Remember when yeah. you know yeah. twenty years from now? I remember when I went to my first game mm-hmm. with my dad. Yeah. Like yeah, you know to yeah, be able to say that. Yeah. And, she, and she's like a super grateful kid. So like everything we did, she was telling one of her sisters last night. Actually, she's like, yeah, it was great. We actually ate out twice. <laughs> We went to Culver's and Taco Bell. <laughs> I spare no expense. Yeah, I was going to say, man, Matt, the big spender here. Well, Culver's is kind of pricey. Well, actually, oh, Culver's is. is. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So we're like, you got to go I to mean, Taco Bell I mean, honestly, now. in 2022, you can't get anything at Taco Bell for less than $7 either. Yeah. Right. I mean, oh, yeah, so... for sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. We, awesome. um, we've also been making a lot of TikToks lately. Um, so you know, TikTok to, game strong. Yeah, it's, they've been pretty funny. Yeah, we've enjoyed that. The kids are kind of getting into it. it. Brings back some COVID memories because that's really when we started doing yeah. our TikTok videos. Yeah. So, kind of looking at them, thinking of the family in mind, and what can we do together? And you know, thanks for Abby and I. So we we've done some of those. We'll make sure to link you our will, TikTok channel in the you show will notes. In- inevitably see one of our daughters with an attitude oh yeah one of sure. our daughters every tiktok is mad that we're doing a, it it's yeah a, yeah it's usually a different we're doing one. this tiktok you yeah. suck and it you, up yeah. <laughs> we need to do outtakes out of five yeah. right somebody's yeah. mad yeah. smile <laughs> you are having fun we did this one <laughs> don't quit your teeth at me <laughs> yeah we did this one during covid the phil collins where we shut oh, the doors yeah. I actually da-dum, yelled. Da-dum, yes. Da-dum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yelled at my child. <laughs> and then it's for action. You're not having fun. <laughs> you're yeah. not having fun. Yeah. I know I like, I'm not. <laughs> I was like, either you straighten up or you get out of here. Yeah. And then Matt's like, no, she has to be in yeah, here. She her. has yeah, to yeah, shut yeah, this yeah, drawer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she yeah. has to. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, she's oh. the da dump. She's yeah. the. <laughs> yeah, she's the important piece. <laughs> yeah. Don't oh. make our daughter mad. Right. And then you get all the comments. Oh, it's so cute. Your family's like, so right. adorable. Nope. Like, yeah, if you yeah. saw behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's funny is there needs to be a TikTok of behind oh, the scenes. Great. A yeah. hidden camera. Yeah. What you see. I and don't then know what that I, happens. I yeah. cannot do that because you will see crazy mom. <laughs> <laughs> the dark side. Yeah. I yeah. love it. All you right. put a smile on your face. <laughs> Okay, anyway. <laughs> All right, let's move on. So <clears throat> today's focus, we are going to be talking about the Dink game. Uh, we've covered the past two episodes, the first two phases of the pickleball point. First, we talked about the serve and return. Then we talked about the struggle to the line. So today we're talking about the Dink game where everything slows down a little bit. So as always, we kind of want to correlate that with a little bit of our story. Um, so Abby, we're going to talk about where our life slowed down a little bit. We got into kind of last week when we were married, went through some infertility stuff, got some, uh, comments from, from some of you out there. Appreciate, uh, those for other people who've struggled with the same thing. It's always kind of a connection piece. And Abby's even said, you know, she has just a special place in her heart for, uh, ladies and for couples that have gone through that as well. So heard a little bit about that story and then when we decided to go into the adoption process that's where everything kind of slowed down and we were kind of getting ready for the waiting game Mm -hmm. didn't quite turn out like that but um, maybe kind of walk us through Abby our journey into adoption yeah I mean obviously because it was a big point like a turning point in our lives I I remember kind of dates so I remember October of 08 was Mm -hmm. when we first met with the agency to start the process just a local agency around here and uh yeah they're like you know it takes about six months to do your home study and so then of course i was like challenge accepted yeah it's gonna take me shorter right (laughs) and so that was like i said october of 08 and we had to do a lot of paperwork which was i just am probably the paperwork person in the house just in general anyway so Mm. i did all of that 
and you know fingerprinting and cps and fbi and all that all that stuff and um so those who have adopted before or may be familiar with it there's kind of two major decisions you make or one major decision two options is international versus um domestic domestic and and we i remember why we did domestic do you remember Mm, remind me well because I had just gotten a new job, and mm. if you go international, you have to travel to, to the country once get <laughs> or twice, yeah. yeah, and you stay there for yeah. a long time. And financially too, you know, it's I was a, a teacher and thinking how we can't right. really. A lot of people afford, do GoFundMe's yeah. and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I, I have some old yeah. family friends that adopted to come to find out they were gypsies, like like I am, and they adopted them from Ukraine mm. and. It was a big ordeal. Now they raised the money. Yeah, they mm-hmm. didn't. You know, they were able to raise yeah. it, but it was crazy how yeah. much they had to go over there back and forth, and it mm-hmm. was a lot of money. Now, luckily, the church put up a lot, and they were able to raise some. They mm-hmm. didn't end up paying out of pocket, but yeah. it was a big ordeal. No Absolutely. question. Yeah, and so sometimes your decisions are just practical. It was mm-hmm. practical at that time for us to not need to travel overseas. You know, could we in the future? Maybe, but yeah, I mean, we're good with five kids, but. <laughs> At in 2008, t- you were like, in the future, if in the we want to adopt more. Yeah, you, but at this yeah. moment, we need to probably stay domestic just practically. Yep. Made a lot of sense. Um, so, yeah, we just kind of landed. I mean, and, and again, there's so, I mean, I I feel those feelings sometimes of like, where do I start? Well, you just start. Yeah. And, and you'll you'll figure it out. You know, I actually had somebody, t- I didn't even tell you this. I had somebody text me yesterday hmm. um, asking if we could sit down and meet with them. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, about to talk about. The adoption process and I had those feelings again of like the mm. overwhelming where do you even start yeah um, and it was a so. couple that took us kind of under their wing that we had all those questions as well yeah. mm-hmm. and really I mean it's been a while since we've had kind of those but um, I, I always enjoyed that I mean, we've yeah. probably done that you know half a dozen times like, ourselves yeah, help, helping people and we had an adoption group at our church for a while that we were you know a big part of so adoption is a big part of our story for sure and you know, it's it's a wonderful thing, but it's also kind of invasive. I mean, may, maybe talk a little bit about that piece of it. I think yeah. that was one thing that was kind of shocking to me is how many. De- I mean, you're getting a kid. You're not you're not taking a puppy or a kitten home. This isn't right. A they need human to know. being a child. They need I to know. make sure you're. I did. I did have a patient tell me once. <clears throat> oh, I adopted a puppy this weekend. I guarantee it was harder than adopting a baby. Ooh. So flippantly, and I was like. I was very kind. And, was and like, they well, didn't know. And they we didn't know. And, yeah, and we love dogs. I said, well, <laughs> right, right. I can tell you that's probably not true. <laughs> yeah. And then I laughed. But And yeah. he was kind of like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> but like no. Yeah. I mean, they, so. dig, they dig deep, though, and just in terms of your story and where you're at. The fu- what was the funniest question they asked, like, I on know. the home study? Does, e- does each of your bedrooms have a window and a door? A window and a door. And so we're oh, like, oh, here's your window and your door, kid. Here, here kid, and here's your room. You got a window and a door. <laughs> what else do you want? <laughs> Welcome. Can I have a closet to put my stuff in? No, no that's not what it said on the Just form. a window yeah. and a door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look out the window for a <laughs> closet. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was so funny. Right. <clears throat> so, so, anyways, we, yeah, just, I got it done quick. And yeah. they actually kept saying... You're going too fast. <laughs> yeah, they did. Because then like, it was. Do you know me? <laughs> yeah. So fast forward, you know, three months. It's January 2009, and our it's dated. Our home study is dated, finalized January 28th, 2009. Yeah, yep. and we'll leave it there. It's a cliffhanger, and in future episodes, we'll kind of get into. We can hint that we have a 13 year old. We do. So do the math. <laughs> right. Yeah. You do the math, people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and take a quick break, and then we will come back and talk some pickleball and get our dink on. See you in a minute. Come join the fun at PickleballRocks.com, your trusted authority when it comes to all your pickleball needs. Apparel, paddles, bags, hats, you name it, you'll find it there. Family owned and operated for nearly 15 years. Matt and I are growth pros for Pickleball Rocks, and for being a loyal listener of the One More Game podcast, we can offer you a 15% discount at checkout when you use the code MATTB15. So head over to pickleballrocks.com and check it out. Let's play. Welcome back. So we mentioned before the break that our pickleball focus for today is going to be on the dink game. That's the third of the four stages as outlined by Joe Baker. Um, so Abby, the dink game is really what it's all about. Um, it's really what separates, I would say, a good pickleball player from a great pickleball player. And um, what do we want to 
start with here? That's a broad topic. There's a lot of different things we can talk about. Yeah, so. I'm curious because I have a couple of questions. <clears throat> so I'm curious to see what your answer is. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it, you know, you it it's the what comes right after that third shot drop. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point is that third shot is getting it into the kitchen so that people at the net aren't driving it back at you. So they're dinking it back. So it's kind of like the the fourth shot. Is that right? Sure. Um, it is the fourth shot. It, it should be. I mean, it depends how good their third shot is. If they've hit a great third shot and they have, um, you know, brought, they've been able to get to the line, then mm-hmm. you're going to have to dink it. Kind of mm-hmm. maybe even to start this all off. And I think we've mentioned this before, but you always want to try to hit the ball to your opponent's feet. Mm-hmm. You want to make the ball bounce. So if they're back, you're going to try to hit the ball to their feet, keeping them back. If they've hit a good third shot and they've made their way to the line, you don't want to hit a a shot up, you know, at their waist level or higher that they can slam. So you're going to get into that dink game. So that's kind of how we're we're beginning that new transition to the third stage of the dink game. So So question then. Yeah. Uh, So when you you said a key thing, when someone is back, you want to keep them back and hit it at your feet. Mm -hmm. So. I wonder if I should change then and if people listening have my mindset of if someone's back, I am dinking it crazy short and okay. trying to be cute with it, which yeah. sometimes I don't, but yeah. so that it will end up bouncing twice. And now the point is absolutely. Yeah. So, so that's a drop. I mean, that, that would be like a, you know, a drop shot or just putting an extra spin on it so that they can't get to. It. And if you feel that they're back far enough, that's yeah, that absolutely can be a good strategy. But, but on by, average, you're saying to by not, and large, I would say most of the time you want to hit the ball hard yeah. back at their feet. If would they're you, back, stay hmm. back. Would you even say, that a good thing to recognize is if all four feet of these people are behind the baseline go ahead and drop that yeah but if they're moving in there's a chance any one of them could get it don't drop shot it unless you said all four people all four, four feet. feet oh i'm sorry I'm which saying one's two four people like yeah. okay. see the yeah. math there yeah yeah i see that <laughs> two two times two i get it yeah. okay I'm, yeah. I'm with you i'm sorry just that should that could click something yeah four feet behind the, oh maybe i should drop yeah. this one i okay. also like to see their momentum too yeah. if if they've maybe they are Almost, maybe you lobbed it. Right. Maybe I lobbed it or maybe I hit a shot that caused them. They were halfway back, but they had to kind of take a step back. They, they mm-hmm. maybe aren't all the way behind the baseline, but they are moving in the direction of the baseline. If I can hit a drop, they're going to have a hard mm-hmm. time regaining their momentum to come forward. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't want to get too much in the weeds on that because we want to. I think real, that was a good question. Though. But that is a very good question, Adam, just in terms of. Yeah, I, I, think, I really was curious yeah. Yeah. what you thought. So for, uh, for the most part, if they're back, keep them back. Yep. Yep. I think okay. that's fair to say. Okay. But once once everybody is kind of, so we're kind of talking like if you can imagine everybody is now at the line. So we both teams have made their way to the kitchen line, uh, the struggle to the line for the, the serving team. Um, they've gotten there. And so now we're all four up there. And now like, it's pickleball. Like now, now it's yeah. the other stuff is this yeah. fluff, guys. Like yeah. Yeah. now it's pickleball. And, and, exactly. And exactly. And that's really what separates pickleball from tennis in that way is you have that seven foot zone, the kitchen that you have to stay out of unless the ball bounces. So you take advantage of that. So if, if you hit a dink in tennis, somebody standing there is just going to slam the ball right up you because <laughs> they can stand at the net with their mm-hmm. toes right up against it. But in pickleball, they have to stay that seven feet back. So you're going to have to let it bounce. So that's where a good dink game um, can really neutralize your, your opponent hitting the ball hard. And it's what I love about mm-hmm. pickleball, too, is it becomes a chess match. You watch high level pickleball when they get up into that dink game, they're moving the ball back and forth. Um, it's in some ways, unless you really play it, it's what can look somewhat boring if you don't really understand the strategy. And that's sure. one reason I would say I'm not sure if pickleball will ever catch on, <laughs> you know, as a TV sport unless you play it. You know, it's kind of like golf. Some people are like, I can't just watch Or golf. even baseball. Like right. the, the amount of time that the pitcher is not pitching yeah. and the amount of time that, okay, four balls in a row have been thrown and no bat has even swung because yeah. it was a bad pitch or this. It's boring. Like mm-hmm. that same mindset I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it, it really is a chess match. And, mm-hmm. and to see the way people are in, and until you really get into it, mm-hmm. you see um, the strategies that they may be doing subtly that you don't even understand. Um, it really is good. And, you know, 
we talk about staying patient as like maybe the number one thing, you know, make the ball bounce, but stay patient. Do not be the one to speed it up. It kind of becomes who's going to blink first, mm -hmm. you know, who, who's, who's going to be that person to, mm -hmm. to speed it up. Cause when they speed it up, a lot of times they're going to make a mistake, either hit it into the net or hit it long or hit it up high enough that the other team can slam it back down. Yeah, and and I just, I'm gonna throw in here, this is this is the kind of play I like because I like just extended rallies. And some people don't, and that's honestly totally fine. Some people just wanna hit it hard and be done. But I like <laughs> like longer points and yeah, like- Yeah, for sure. Like 10, 20, 30 hit dink yeah. rallies. Yeah, somebody can where hit- Where you're like tired at the end right. of the point. If there's a great serve, great return, and then somebody hits a killer, just drive right up the middle. I mean, it's like, oh, good shot. That was good. Right. But if you have like a 30 oh, point yeah. rally back oh and forth. You got people everywhere. Yeah. I mean, those people are the ones. People starting to watch. Yeah. And people like, people so stop fun. and ooze and ahs. So. And then people are clapping. Yeah. Yeah. It feels great. I mean, that's just so fun. Yeah. Um, let's maybe talk about the technique a little bit. Um, so let's start with beginners. So if you're a beginner listening, um, we already talked about making it bounce, but what other tips do you give Abby when you're teaching um, to beginners with a good solid dink yeah I mean the tip down so the tip of your paddle if you think just the end of it mm -hmm. um, more down and not parallel to the ground so again we're back to that cornhole toss thought yeah right where we're we talked about that in the lifting third shot it over, drop. yeah yep. um, and then I always just say to bend your knees I feel like yep. nobody nobody thinks about that mm -hmm. and that but can really but that's part of just having a real athletic yeah. stance, right? Just yeah. Kind of. But a lot of people are sufficient at bending at the waist, mm -hmm. and so it works out. Yep. Um, but bending at your knees is still going to be more mobile in the long run, better for your back. Yeah, that's true, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how about in terms of the mechanics, um, shoulder versus wrist? Kind of talk about yeah. what does that look like? Yeah, I mean, it's so funny. I you're supposed to use your shoulder more than your wrist, but I feel like I'm kind of wristy yeah. and I don't love that. So I've yeah. actually am working on correcting that. Mm -hmm. um, and it, this is where I think sometimes videoing yourself is helpful. Cause I don't mm. think I would have noticed that until Matt like recorded some games and I was like, man, I use my wrist. I think not in my backhand, but in my forehand, I use my wrist too much. Yeah. So I've, I have to figure that out a little well, bit. There's sometimes going to be in, when we yeah. talk about the higher levels, maybe there's a little bit more of flicks and things like that, but typically for placement of the yeah. ball yeah, yeah yeah i'm not saying take the wrist out of it but but for beginners especially mm -hmm. what i see more than anything is people flicking it and hitting it way too hard mm -hmm. the 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 common tendency for a beginner is to hit their dinks way too hard popping them up hitting them not making them bounce that's why you think about the visualization piece of it think about that ball just going softly over the net all you're trying to do is bounce it in the kitchen you have seven feet you know even if your dinks initially are only going three feet back you're making it bounce you're not allowing your opponent to attack that ball is is really important mm -hmm. the contact point should be out in front mm -hmm. um you, you you don't want to be you know behind you when you're contacting it i actually had to work on this too you know again c not coming from any sort of paddle racket background mm -hmm. you know i've i think i've said this more soccer basketball i had to for a while put a ball under my armpit mm, and in yeah. the basement and yep. just hit against a wall just to get a shorter a shorter swing because yeah. i was just kind of just swinging away you know finally somebody told me that hey yeah. you're supposed to swing less yeah i was like oh i didn't know yeah just yeah just short little keep it more compact and yeah. we've talked about that you know quite a bit even in blocks abby's been working on that and just the more compact you can be and not big swings is going to um, help you reduce the number of errors um also kind of thinking about your paddle when we work with kids we talk about like you're kind of swinging like an elephant's trunk kind of back and forth so it should be linear you should take it back on the same path as your target line is forward so you're not wanting to be cutting across the ball but you're wanting to kind of just swing in a nice straight motion back and forth um, to to produce consistency and again this is more for beginners um, that aspect of it but um, you also want to be sure that you um, are giving yourself margin for error. You're not trying to clip the net or make it just barely go over because the worst thing you can do is put it in the net, right? Mm -hmm. Point over. Mm -hmm. 
you know, make sure that you're making that ball bounce, but first and foremost, make sure it's getting over the net. Yeah. Anything else for beginners? Yeah. Do you want to talk about the vegan feet? Well, I like that. I just saw that on TikTok <laughs> the other day. This old lady, she's cute. She said, don't have vegan feet. You don't want to have vegan feet. Vegan feet? What's that? She's like, vegan feet are plant-based. You don't want to be plant-based. You want to keep your feet moving. And, and I she think that's good. was so cute. She <laughs> was good. so spry and yeah. movable at her age. I mean, I would guess she was mid-60s. At least, yeah. Early 70s. Yeah. I can't tell these days, but everybody's getting younger. Because <laughs> we get closer. I get she older. Had meat feet. But yeah. she had yeah, she she, meat. carnivore feet. <laughs> Carn yeah. But I mean, Good. she was so quick with her feet yeah. at her age. And I was like, wow, I'm impressed. Yeah. Which that's a whole topic I feel like could be a show of yeah. things to do. No. And I would say it's not that you want to be like dancing around right. as the ball's coming, but you want your you feet anticipate. to be moving. And I see this a lot with amateurs and when they first start playing they get like in their head i can't step in the kitchen i can't step uh -huh. in the kitchen and then so a ball bounces as soon as a ball bounces even before it bounces if you anticipate it's going to bounce you can step into the kitchen it's not like you have to you know, it's not like the floor is lava and you got to stay out of it you've got you know you can step in to give yourself a better mm -hmm. um you know angle to hit that ball right and like you said anticipate hopefully we can all see trajectories you yep. know if you remember geometry class figuring <laughs> and out judge how hard there's and where I mean, yeah absolutely. if you can kind of meet it where yeah. it's going to be and yeah. i mean i get lazy sometimes too you yeah. know i just don't want to move my feet yeah so let's go kind of next level then talking more advanced play what what are we thinking about in the dink game still yeah. still keeping it low to high yeah right? yeah but i do think this you know the i think the better you get the more it, it's kind of a uh, you can roll it so it's kind of more mm -hmm. of a, a harder drive dink if you will yeah. is that fair to say so not as much yeah. not as much low to high a little bit more coming 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 across it mm -hmm. so you might be putting some top spin or mm -hmm. some back spin mm -hmm. um, you're trying to kind of disguise which way the ball's going a little bit so um, you definitely are keeping it a lot closer to the net for sure yeah. um, you, you'll see we'll talk about different dinks after the break but yeah. um, kind of having more of those low trajectory dinks that can uh, cause your opponent's problems um, mm -hmm. but but spin's a big thing especially in yeah. the date game for sure and yeah. we know how much adam loves spin spinach spinach <laughs> that's what they call me yeah that's your nickname because mm -hmm. you eat so healthy because <laughs> you're, you're like popeye wow is that a fat <laughs> joke <laughs> <laughs> now it is <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> okay <laughs> um it wasn't at first <laughs> you are um you talked about keeping your knees bent is, yeah. is good for amateurs but <laughs> Man, at the pro level, oh man, you just see how they get down into that. They're in like squat, deep squats. It's crazy deep squat position. There so. was actually I was watching the MLP, and there was a celebration of Zane and Paris. They won a shot, or they won something, a certain rally, and they both did a deep squat as celebration. And it was so funny. They both had their <laughs> arms up and both did a what? deep squat. And I was like, dang, that was like that this, was just impressive. It was choreographed. Like no, oh, they just was, did it. That was their that like, was their cele. It was like a choreographed in their zone. In their yeah. zone, I was like, yeah. I was more impressed with that than the actual yeah. like <laughs> the choreography, the yeah. shot of it. Um, one thing again for more advanced players, you have to be careful of is when you get into some of those dink rallies and you're going wider and wider and you're really trying to kind of push your opponents out wide, if you go too far, right. you can really set people up for an ATP and they're able to hit the ball around the, the post and kind of give them an easy uh, shot to, that's really hard to defend. So you do have to, if you're one of those advanced players, you know, make sure that you're not pushing too wide, um, especially if it has pace and it's going to really get out there, uh, quicker players are able to take those and turn them into mm -hmm. ATPs. Um, talk a little bit about crossing your feet. I think there's kind of some divergent um, theories on whether or not you should cross over. So if I'm on the left side and somebody dinks it to my backhand and it's kind of out there, um, some people would teach that I could kind of step across with my right foot. Um, others would say absolutely don't do that, shuffle mm -hmm. out and get out there kind yeah of. i mean on it's, it is funny that you say that on the left side mm -hmm. i do put my i do i will cross my feet too yeah yeah and, and some pros will teach because i want to get there and i and you and i are at the age yeah where we can recover from that still yeah it, maybe there will be a day we can't there probably will be <laughs> um, so question then here we go yeah i in situations where i have time if i'm on the left side i'm sw and it's really on my left side mm -hmm. i'm switching hands every time yeah 
ambidextrous. Because you're ambidextrous. So, but yeah. is that a thing? Yeah. S- some people do that. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if I've seen too many pros or could name any pros that do that because they're so good and so quick with their backhand that they can get there. Um, but I, I know several very good players, you know, that are still at the. I can get there. You know, I want to place the ball at all times. Every yeah. time I hit the ball. I am in my head wanting it to go to a certain place. Mm-hmm. Sure. I want the point. I want to win that time. Yeah. Like, yeah, I love the, you know, up at the net. But if I can get a point right there, I'm going to try. Yeah. And I just feel better if it's all the way on my left side. Just go ahead and hit it left handed then and try and place it because yeah. I can place it better. If you're mm-hmm. con- if you're confident like I th- with that. I'd- I mean, I feel like there are some basic, basic things about pickleball, but we all make it our own. Yeah. I mean, yeah. do what you want. You do you, boo. Well, that's not what I want to hear. I want you to tell me, no, don't do that. Do it. <laughs> like, I wish I was ambidextrous. Yeah. Wish you could go. Yeah. I'd, I'm just <laughs> it just seems that. weird. Yeah. Um, Anywho. The last thing I'll say just about more advanced players is just um, your your movement's going to be a lot more. Um, you're kind of thinking in terms of the partnership and moving with your partner. Um, mm. and, and you might be going a little wider or noticing where that ball's at and, and talking about positioning on the court. And we'll, we'll talk about that again after the break when we get into some strategy stuff as well. So let's do take a uh, quick break and then we will come back and we will talk some more about dinking. Are you new to the game of pickleball and looking to learn the basics? Or maybe you're an experienced player who wants to take your game to the next level. Both Matt and I would love to help. That's right, Abby. We are both Level 2 IPTPA certified instructors and would love working with you, either giving you private lessons, group lessons, or hosting a clinic. We also offer unique video coaching utilizing the latest in drone technology. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, or TikTok by searching Hoosier Pickleball or email us at HoosierPickleball at gmail.com. Also, check out the show notes for all the links to our social channels. All right, welcome back to One More Game presented by Hoosier Pickleball. And today we are talking about the third phase of the Pickleball Point, the dink game. So, Ab, let's transition into the different types of dinks. We've got a few different ones we're going to talk about. Uh, Start us off with the offensive dink. Yeah, so to me this is more of a what's called a push dink. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be lower and a little a little longer, right? So more instead of It may of not bouncing, even bounce in the kitchen. It yeah. may actually be kind of right at their feet or their ankles. Yeah. So maybe yeah, maybe if it bounces it's kind of on the line. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a little, you know, they don't know what to do with it. Are they going to let it bounce? Or are they going to try to take it out of the air? That makes it tricky for your opponent to figure out what they're going to do with it. Right. It's risky for you if you do it a little bit too hard on then accident. Now they can slam it. Absolutely. Right. If, if you get it up high. a little too high or mm-hmm. yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. No. Yeah, so it can be. So that's when you're kind of, you know, you wait for the apex of the ball mm-hmm. and then you can even put some top spin on it yep. and really get it low. And what's your guys' confidence level? Mine's very low. I don't like that. I don't like because I don't trust myself mm. that that's not going to get slammed. Yeah. What would you guys say your confidence level of those shots? You d- doing dink. them? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty high. And we'll kind of talk about in strategy when the right time is to do that. Um, you don't want to, you know, kind of, We'll talk about that later, but I, I was going to say in the strategy portion, you don't want to push a push. So if somebody hits a really tough one at you and you try to hit a real tough one back at them, um, that's going to result in an error most of the time. So that kind of takes us to our, our second one, w- which we would call a reset dink, right? Mm-hmm. So that's where somebody hits a really good dink at you. And instead of trying to say like, well, I'm going to hit it right back. I'm going to win. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to more try to reset that. And so instead of having that low trajectory that just barely got over the net, you're going to just try to put a little bit more arch mm-hmm. on it to get it back. Maybe they hit another tough one at you, um, or maybe it catches them or they have to take a step and they can't hit as, as good of a as, of a push dink. Yeah, but, I mean, so maybe your reset dink, they hit a really nice push dink. Maybe your re- reset dink is cross court to their backhand, mm-hmm. or oftentimes I'll reset it right across from me to my opponent, like across from me, mm-hmm. their backhand. So, so, but that's that can be risky because you be. could hit it too high, and that person can just slam it right back at you. Dare you say risque? Risque. Risque. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the last thing you want to do is is hit a what we call a dead dink. 
So dead dinks um, are, are kind of more of a beginner. I dink. think that's my specialty, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a dead dink is one that, yeah, it may go over just fine and it may bounce in the kitchen, but maybe it bounces up a little too high. It's one that your opponent can really attack. And I don't even necessarily mean attack with speeding it up, but even attack, it, it allows them to really hit a push dink back. So in your reset dinks, if this makes sense, you want your reset dinks to be good enough that it's not just going to allow them to really come right back at you with another push dink. So you're kind of yeah. trying to move it around and variety is, is key in, in that, not just kind of getting into the same rhythm. So, um, other types of dinks, when we talk about positional dinks, um, you, you mentioned you like to go down the line. So yeah. that, that, that's one place. Not all go. the time, because yeah. I feel like I have set multiple men up for an Ernie, which makes me angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I try not to do too many dinks across for me. But when I see that the guy typically has cheated a little bit, mm -hmm. I can hit it kind of back past his backhand. So he has to back pedal and reach to get to that. And just to explain an Ernie for some people that yeah. would be like, what, what, do you, what does I mean, she mean I by love an them. Ernie? Yes. <laughs> um, but when you go down the line, you're opening yourself up for the possibility of the person on the other side jumping the kitchen line. So it's legal to jump over that into that space, into that kitchen area, uh, as long as you don't land in the kitchen or even touch the line. It, that's part of the kitchen. So um, if you hit a down the line dink and somebody sees that coming and can pick it out of the air, that can be a big surprise and they can hit that back either hard or cross court and, and surprise you with that. So you do have to be careful on those uh, down the line dinks. Mm -hmm. Most dinks are going to be cross court, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's and wh what are the reasons for yeah, that? Yeah, because well because it's with the with the length of the court from a, from corner to corner that's the most forgiving. Mm -hmm. So you have more more space and the middle of the net again is lower. So you have more space that way too, height and length. Yep. For getting getting that ball. So it's the most want. forgiving yeah, if you if, yeah. you if you miss it, you hit it a little high, it still is going to bounce plenty yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. So most of the time you want to be hitting those cross court dinks and you can push a cross court dink for mm -hmm. sure. And, you know, keeping that ball low and hitting it mm -hmm. all the way across the partner. So really a lot of the times, if you, if you watch a, a good pickleball point, it's cross court dinks, you know, back and forth several times. And then somebody will kind of mix it up with a down the line dink or um, maybe pushing it in the middle can be mm -hmm. a good place to go as well. And so that's, that's the last one in terms of positioning um, that can really catch people off guard, uh, especially if they're not communicating. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll see a lot of times that they're kind of look at each other and the ball bounces second time and you win the point well, that way too. Yeah. And that, yeah, that anytime you hit a ball in the middle, you're always having the two people then have to communicate. Yep. And so any middle ball is, is going to be, yep. can be good. For sure. All right. Um, finally, we want to talk about some strategy. A um, few things that we had kind of wanted to, to talk about. You, you said you really like to try to cross court dink against a girl. Yeah. It, it, you're, you're looking in a mixed game. Mm -hmm. You're, you're looking for mm -hmm. that. So yeah, like when I stack with a guy, we'll stack, but if I have the opportunity to be cross court, to cross court dink with a girl, mm -hmm. I'll take that opportunity because I just feel like I have a good chance with that. I mean, yeah. yeah. Cause your, your, your dink game's strong for sure. Yeah, I depending feel like on I who have, it is. yeah, I have pretty decent patience yeah. and I've, I've talked to some, um, partners that I've had that would like to be across the net. So they don't want to be necessarily cross court, but they would rather be straight across from um, the, their female uh, opponent. So uh, I, part of it's a personal preference thing and, yeah. and how, how strong you feel in, in your different yeah. Sometimes it's just game. confidence. I yeah. mean, I know that's, and you know, I could be totally wrong, but yeah. I feel confident in yeah. a cross court dink against girls. So yep. just give me that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, looking to set up the Ernie is another thing. Uh, we talked about the Ernie, but you can also be aggressive in looking to set that up. And that's one reason why it's good to sometimes go down the line, especially if you see the person across from you has kind of cheated a little bit more and there's a little bit of space. If you can sneak a ball that's kind of behind them, that's going to cause them to take a step back, they're going to have a hard time moving the ball back cross court and are probably going to have to kind of come in front of you. So by kind of thinking again, it's that, it's that chess match piece of it where you can really look for that and you can get the ball kind of behind them, 
they're probably going to come up your line, then you can start to kind of anticipate that earning and you yeah. can go for it. I am terrible at anticipating an earning, and I'll yeah. just say that. Yeah. I've done it a couple times, but yeah. especially if I'm on the right, it's a backhand earning. I just I just struggle with it. it. And it, so. it is hard, I will say that, because you do play on the right, especially um, in mixed with me, and it is more difficult yeah. because it's your backhand opposed to you know your forehand. I'm, I'm on the left side, so if any time I can get somebody... Um, down my line my sideline and i know that's coming back i can you know set that up sometimes so uh, that's a good one um uh, it's always good to identify which team is the better dinking team um, if you are the stronger dinking team then you want to try to dink all day and know that you're gonna make less mistakes um, but sometimes you identify this is a really strong dinking team and we you know we may need to speed it up more or try to catch them in some other things they're you know if they're super consistent um, you know, you, you may need to kind of vary your game in that way, but identifying that is a key strategy when you, you're first playing a, a team, maybe that you haven't played before in a tournament or whatever. What else? Yeah. So I think we had said this to not, it's really tough. I'm not going to say always, but it's really tough to push a push. Yep. So just reset those really aggressive low dinks. There's points in, Unless there's somebody, points in time when yeah. you want to win mm -hmm. and there's times where you just want to keep playing yeah, yeah. just and you keep have the to point under alive. yep keep the point alive well, i just always want to, to win <laughs> no 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 but <laughs> but i get what you're saying yeah, yeah. you want to wait for uh, the right moment to yeah. do that because yeah. if all, you say i want to win right now at a spot where you really should just keep it in play yeah. yep. you error yeah. and yeah. now well then did you win right no. yeah you yeah so if anybody has any thoughts on pushing a push you're welcome to yeah, chime in contact, on that. Contact us. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to know. Give your, us your pointer. I'd like how, to know your strategy. I'd like to know. Yeah. Right. I'd yeah. like to see how, how do you we do beat it? you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let's play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so positioning your dinks, we've talked about that a little bit, aiming for backhands, um, even into their body. I think this is one thing that maybe I'm just slow, but it, it took me a while to catch on that, you know, a backhand is outside of your body, forehand. Um, you know, outside of your body. But if you can put a dink like right into somebody, it can kind of handcuff them. Mm -hmm. You don't think about that so much, you know, handcuffing you feel like is more if it's in like you're like hitting your, a hard yeah. shot into their body. Yeah. But um, but that you can even kind of mix it up. You know, if, if you've got somebody in a rhythm of hitting backhand after backhand after backhand, and then all of a sudden you go to the middle and you go to like their inside foot and they have to go from backhand to kind of a handcuffed scoop shot with their forehand, that can really throw it. You'll be amazed how many points you win like that just by, you'd think, well, their backhand's weaker. Well, if they're just in that rhythm of doing that and then you mix it up with something else, th they'll make errors a lot of the time, even yeah. strong players. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's a good one too. Um, we talked about the middle mm -hmm. um, is always good. Yeah, I think you're really good, Matt, at that. So there's a T, you know, where the kitchen line is and that mm -hmm. middle line. Matt's really good at hitting around that T. So it's like a deeper, lower, longer dink. Mm -hmm. But there's two of us sitting there. Who who gets that? It's you know, no it's man's land a little bit. Yeah. A little, little bit. bit. Especially if, you know, he's been cross court dinking, hits that middle one. Well, do I let my partner who's been cross court dinking or do I step in there? Because yeah. that's my, maybe if I'm on the left, you know, maybe that's my forehand. Yeah. Um, that just causes, I think, more communication errors. Absolutely. So I think that's a good, I think that's a good place that, to hit it. And that's, it. you know, we, we talk about this with um, people that we coach and that we give lessons to is how huge communication is. And even just in the dink game, even when it's obvious, you know, mine, I got it, I got it. Because then when it comes, if you're not doing that and then somebody hits a ball in the middle and nobody's communicating, like just always knowing. Mm -hmm. And I'll even say sometimes like, I got middle. If it comes middle, I got middle. Yeah. So I'm an over communicator though. When Me it comes too. To that. Yeah. I'm yelling, you, you, you. Mm -hmm. I'll even do that. You got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, uh, and I like the, um, so if I'm on the left, yep. really covering my side of the court and even a portion of my yeah. my partner's court for my forehand dink. So if the ball, if, you know, my partner, so I'm on the left, if my partner is cross-court dinking and then they are trying to hit it to my partner's backhand, right, mm -hmm. I'm going to... I'm going to try to step in there and take that because not only will I hit it at a different angle, yep. um, but that's my forehand. Yep. So really that is, I think the left-sided player's yeah. job they should be is to more, take that. More the aggressor. And mm -hmm. that's, you're exactly right. And that's what I'm looking for when I'm on the left all the time 
is if somebody's cross court dinking, are they leaving it up? You know, mm-hmm. by the time it gets to you, it's going to be down maybe at your feet. But if, if I'm over far enough, I might be able to pick that ball out All of the right. air, surprise somebody yeah. and, and win the point. But that leaves me susceptible right. to getting too far over into right. the middle. And then I'm wide right. open. But down I my think line. You, you typically get back. I mean, I don't know. I try to. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I'll even. So if I'm on the right because I'm playing with a guy, we're stacking. I mean, there'll be a ball like literally in front of me. And mm-hmm. I know that they're going to come get it. Right. And that's their ball. Yeah. And so, and you see I, that you see that a ton in mix, but yeah. even in you know. A, but I'll a do that to my game, women's partner. Yeah. I'll take that ball right in front of her body. Or a men's game. The, the person primarily, if you're yeah. talking two right-handed players, the yeah. person on the left really is kind of more the aggressor, and yeah. the person who should be kind of controlling the point. Mm-hmm. The person on the right is kind of more the right. The and such a good thing to say, no matter who you're playing with at the beginning of the game, yep. whoever's on the left, you just look at them. You got middle, yep. and then when you switch, okay, you got middle. Mm-hmm. I got middle. Like you just yep. say it, and that really yep. <laughs> solves a lot of problems. Um, all right, so we better leave it there for today. Um, hopefully, we gave some good things to think about, both for beginners and m- some more advanced players. I know even as, you know, feeling like we know a lot of this stuff, even as a ad- more advanced player, I feel like it's good to be reminded of yeah. it. So even in preparing for the show, I, f- I feel like I um, kind of uncover things. I'm like, oh, yeah, I-, I need to do that better. <laughs> I need to think more about that. But, but sometimes you just don't want to think. Sometimes you're just there to relax. Right. And then for sure, like, and that's totally fine. Yeah. So we're going to try something new this week, um, and we're going to end with something we are loving. We okay. are loving. Yeah. So, Abby, this what? Is a guy, okay, this is for the ladies. Mm. Um, I don't know how all the ladies are feeling right now about... Gray know, sweatpants. Oh, no, sorry. No, no, no. I know how I feel about those. <laughs> I am very confused about jeans in 2022. What is mm. happening with mm. jeans? Apparently, we're not supposed to wear skinny jeans, but we are. Most of the jeans that are out make people look like a bag lady. I'm sorry, you don't look very good. <laughs> and there's holes in all of them. And mm. I'm life's too crazy for me to go shopping. Like, I don't have time to go into a store and try on 37 different styles. Mm. And I don't even know what's cool right now because I'm not cool. But you're saying for men, though? I don't or... know what you're doing. This is women. Yeah, I don't know really. Jeans are confusing to me I right now. I haven't thought about jeans in a while. Right, which is good. Count your yeah. blessings. Yeah. So all I, here's what I, I found the solution. So this is, this is not even an ad. I went to Stitch Fix. <laughs> And they sent me some it jeans. It could be Stitch Fix. Stitch if Fix. Listening. If you're listening, mm-hmm. you nailed it. And I got these jeans. I had a twenty dollar off coupon, so for forty dollars, I got such a great pair of jeans that really solved the conundrum of uh. what are jeans in 2022. Uh, the link is in the show notes. Uh, um, it's. Oh, I mean, okay. I don't know. I mean, yeah. we're gonna have to Stitchfix.com. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I get no money for this. This right. is just what yet. I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Stitchfix doesn't care about me. It's episode three. <laughs> right. Yet. Right. Okay. Right. I like your positive thinking. This Matt. is the producer telling <laughs> you. Yet. Um, <laughs> Matt, what are you? I I'll, knew you were gonna say this before I'll, you even yeah. said it. I'll keep. I'll this keep is, it with the yeah. you know theme of clothes yeah. and this time of year is my favorite yes. jeans and sweatshirt and for my birthday uh, I got my first vineyard vine shirt Abby um, bought me it's very comfortable nice yeah very soft yeah very soft um, and th- you've kind of had a theme with the yeah. last couple I think Father's 20 Day. years yeah <laughs> <laughs> but especially the last few uh, gifts you've given me have been very cozy very comfy Father's Day we are going to put this in the show notes yes um, it is, what is it called? The, it's a wearable blanket. Yeah. And it's called the comfy or the, the comfy. Yeah. The cozy. I yeah. got it. I mean, I got it from Amazon. So I'll put the oh, link in man. the show notes. It's like wearing a blanket, a fleece blanket. I mean, I love it. Matt I, wears it all. It's like wearing. I, I can't, you were wearing it last night. I was wearing it last he night. He wasn't feeling good last night though. Yeah. And I came home from trick or treating yeah. and we, yeah. I saw Matt in his, in his cozy thing. Yeah. And it's I was cozy. like, looking good, babe. Yeah. Super, super cozy. <laughs> looking comfy, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Stunning. St- that stunning. Is, that is stunning. Stunning. <laughs> All right. Well, we will leave it there. Thank you again, as always, for joining us. And we will be back next week as we talk about that fourth phase of the pickleball point, the speed up. See you next time. See ya. As always, we want to thank our sponsors, Hoosier Pickleball, Indiana Physical Therapy, and Pickleball Rocks. In addition, a big thank you to our production company, Caraggio Media, and the 95.7 WELT studio in beautiful downtown Fort Wayne. Please make sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts or find us on YouTube at One More Game Pod. That's the number one more game pod. Hit that subscribe button and be sure to leave us a five-star rating to help us spread the word. 
You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok at Hoosier Pickleball for all kinds of fun tips, tricks, and other family nonsense, and also some great discussion. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week.